Hey everybody, it's me, your favorite natural path here in Hollywood. How is everybody today? Today is a fun day uh, and I'm looking forward to the topic I'm going to be covering. The topic I'm going to be covering has a lot to do with my undergraduate degree, which was anthropology, along with my current profession and what I did with my uh, doctorate. So my undergrad, University of Washington, is in anthropology, and my doctorate is in naturopathic medicine. I focus on prevention, optimal health, staying healthy. And my practice is in West Hollywood, so I am in the center of the storm. And uh, I decided to do this topic, which has a lot to do with my training as an anthropologist. And because I got into a series of conversations with people in Los Angeles who are actors, producers, directors, etc., who are good people and they are concerned about their health and the health of the profession that they love so much. And they're also concerned about your health if you're somebody who uh, loves film uh, as much as I do. And you want to make sure that it stays in, uh, a profession that is healthy and positive for everybody involved. So for that reason, from a public health perspective, I decided to, to, uh, to cover the topic of Hollywood uh, the industry of making film and television and to view it from the perspective of uh, having cult-like properties or the cult of Hollywood. Is uh, the Hollywood industry a cult? If it is a cult, how is it a cult? Defining co a cult, what a cult is, what we know about cults, uh, I can also tell you that I have volunteered at organizations that help get people out of cults. And that is another conversation. Who gets in a cult? Who is attracted to cults? Uh, because we see a lot of the people that are attracted to Hollywood and celebrity are also people that are vulnerable to joining cults. That there's actually a correlation between people who come out to California and follow Chase After Celebrity and people that can, while they're out here, join a cult. And in fact, we see a high concentration of cults in a very small area here in Los Angeles. And I would argue that there's a correlation because uh, it's a similar mindset and a similar type of person that is attracted to both. So first, I want to talk a little bit about the public, the consequences to public health that I am seeing in, I'm going to focus mostly on my actors because some of my actors have gone on to be directors and producers and they're t trying to retain their health, their sanity and their integrity. And they feel that it's almost impossible. And so I don't want people to feel the fact that I decided to officially come out and do this video I just want to go on record saying that my patients asked me to do this. So please don't say I'm bashing actors or producers, etc., because um, my actors and uh, producers, etc., said, please, yes, whimsy, please do this. So uh, I got the thumbs up. So I want to talk first about the public health uh, aspects of um, what I'm seeing as a consequence of people being in the health, uh, in the um, in the industry, in the Hollywood industry, because they come to my office and I'm seeing some health concerns. The first uh, is, uh, the first thing that I'm seeing a lot of is eating disorders. That is definitely a public health concern that I'm seeing uh, with my actors and entertainers. I'm seeing um, a lots of dieting, uh, anorexia, nervosia, and uh, with that comes malnutrition, malabsorption, uh, osteoporosis. In my bulimic patients, I also have uh, ha treated uh, some uh, actors, uh, people in the industry, uh, where there's been chronic bulimia, loss of the enamel on the teeth, uh, having to have new uh, teeth put in. Uh, these are common diseases that I'm seeing amongst actors 
in Hollywood. And the reason why is because my model, uh, my patients who are models and actors are being told to maintain BMIs that are below eight, the females below 18.5. They stop having a menstrual cycle. Uh, ironically, the women are, that are toted as some of the most beautiful in America often cannot even maintain a monthly menstrual cycle. And that is because they've been told to lose so much weight that they can no longer ovulate. Now, to me, that's a public health issue. And it reminds me of the book, The Jungle, that discussed working at a meatpacking plant during the Industrial um, Revolution when people were putting their lives at risk simply because they wanted to get a job. I don't think that people who love being actors uh, feel called to do the work of being actors, not because they want to be necessarily celebrities or anything silly like that, but because they really love being actors. I think that that's great. They study hard, they work hard, they want to master their craft. They should not have to compromise their health simply to, be, to get a job. And that goes for my models as well. I've had patients come in with BMIs of 16 who have fired me because they didn't understand why they hadn't had a period for two or three years. And I told them that they needed to get their weight up. They fired me because their agent, the producers, directors, etc., told them to lose another five pounds. I am not going to help you lose another five pounds. I am here to help you get well and stay healthy and sane. And when I have a community that's fighting me on that, I decide to come out and say something. It's because I have the best of intentions. So I labeled this video Hollywood as a cult because I'm seeing this. I'm also seeing post-traumatic stress disorder depression and anxiety, alcoholism and drug addiction. This is very common uh, with actors feeling isolated, depressed. And I'm talking about very successful people in their professional lives, but uh, it's taking a, a terrible toll. Malnutrition because they're not properly eating. That's why you'll often see them go get IV vitamin therapy. They're not eating. Uh, poverty is not uncommon. They'll publicly look like they're doing great, drive the fancy car, it might be borrowed, or wear the fancy clothes, get out on a red carpet, but they're couch surfing because they don't have any money because they haven't worked in two years, but they're blowing all this money to present themselves as a certain way. Uh, damage due to cosmetic surgery is very, very common. Uh, they're being told that they are no longer attractive after the age of 40, so they put their life at risk by going and having these uh, crazy surgeries, which also makes them further impoverished, liposuction, which can cause dehydration, and I've had patients that have nearly had cardiac arrest during some of these surgeries. A uh, high incidence of suicide, suicidal tendencies, overdose. So I want to now address Hollywood as a cult, what constitutes a cult, and why we're seeing a lot of the same problems in Hollywood and people who are trying to get into the industry or in the industry, we're seeing the same health, health challenges that we see in cult members. People get into a cult, they stop eating, uh, they go under uh, sometimes mind control, they have post-traumatic stress disorder, malnutrition, poverty, they try to get some control over their life, particularly after they leave a cult and become suicidal. There's often uh, depression, drug abuse, etc. These are a lot of the same things that we see in people who are trying to either deal with life in a cult or trying to get out of a cult. When we look at a cult, there are a couple of things that we see in a cult. For starters, we have to look at the belief systems that we see in fundamental churches and in cults. Some commonalities. And one of the things that we see is this idea of isolation, that the person who follows that community or follows that church or that cult sets themselves apart. They're told that they are the chosen one or the chosen person and that everybody else is regular people. So, or maybe the rest of us are not as equal as others. So there's 
an immediate power struggle that starts to happen. Either you're with us or you're against us. So the people that get into the industry are set apart. They're told that they're special or they're different, or maybe they believe it themselves that they're special, that they're different, that they're more entitled than others. They are, in effect, God's chosen people. They are chosen by God to be a quote-unquote celebrity. That's a fake world word, by the way. And by the way, all of this is just created to sell movie tickets, hype, and popcorn. None of it's real. It's all pretend. But this is the structure of the cult. So you have the chosen and you have those that are not chosen. So that is the first thing that we see in Hollywood that we also see in cults. Now, when you join the cult whether it's this cult or any other cult, it has structures. You work your way up the hierarchy of the cult. And so in the beginning, you have to prove your devotion to the cult. That means you're willing to do anything in order to move ahead in, uh, up the ladder in the cult. That's very dangerous because it means that the person who's a struggling actor who really wants to make it in Hollywood has to begin to ask, ask themselves certain ethical questions. How badly do I want it? Do I want to be the top model or the top actor to such an extent that I compromise my own values? And so maybe they do things or feel pressured to do things that they don't want to do uh, as a way of showing their devotion to those higher up, whether it's the agent, the producer, or the director. And then it becomes a power struggle. And that's also when we start to see the introduction of drugs and alcohol uh, in, in a uh, cult. We also see uh, sleep deprivation, anxiety, panic, etc., and the fear of being outcast. You'll never work in this town again. This is something we also see in cults as people have to prove their way, uh, as people have to prove themselves more and more as devoted to the cult. There is this intense fear of exile, that they will be cast out from uh, the community that they see as the chosen community. So that is something that we also see in Hollywood. You want to be a part of it. You want to be in, in the uh, industry. You want to be special. You want to be one of the chosen ones. And... You want it so badly, you're willing to do anything and compromise any values in order to get it. The more you want it, the more you give your values over to the cult rather than to, to any values you might have had before you joined the cult. And so consequently, there's this fear of exile. And exile, traditionally, from an anthropological perspective, is viewed as certain death. And that's because historically, when we look at exile, exile into the desert, exile from a community, it was thought that people could not survive exile, particularly in harsh environments. The fear of exile meant death because the person was cast out into the wilderness without resources, and there was a real good chance that they were not going to survive. And so you'll never work in this town again if you don't do A, B, and C, is the fear of exile from this cult, this cult that is Hollywood. So in terms of the structure of a Hollywood and how it works like a cult, usually in a cult you have a leader. In Hollywood it's a little bit different. You have multiple studio executives, but each of them has tremendous amount of power. There's a hierarchical structure with the... Um, the, the, the lowest of the tier being the followers, the people that will sit outside where they think that actors hang out. That's the periphery. These are the people that support the structure. Above that, you might have uh, actors that have jobs, working actors. <laughs> Sorry, but this is what I see. Uh, then you might have the actor who's the lead as you go up. And then above that, you might have the director, then the producer, and then finally the studio exec. So you have the star, the actor is the, the god in this world. They are the god. They are set apart. 
they are not a regular person. They are perceived of as special, as one of the chosen people in the cult. And then the producer is seen as the god of the gods. And so consequently, the producer has tremendous power. Like, like I had said earlier, the fear of being set into exile, the fear of the power differential between uh, those that want to be in this community of the chosen ones and those who are not. Now, the other interesting thing about cults is that they are fascistic. They have a fascistic element. If you look at people who have studied fascism, fascism and evil, like uh, Hannah Arendt is somebody that I, uh, I, I uh, discuss her thesis a lot. I'll put links below on my YouTube channel if you'd like to read about her. She's written about Eichmann in Jerusalem, the banality of evil. She talked about fascism as existing predominantly as a belief system where you believe that you are the master race. You are the master race. You are the master class. You are above reproach. You are higher than uh, others. And once you get to that belief system where you are isolated, you're in a closed community, you start to believe that you are better or higher or a celebrity or a star, you then, the, the dark side of this, the fascistic side is that you then begin when you are the chosen one to believe that all other people are subhumans. And at that point, you no longer have to treat them as being members of a common humanity. I'll give an example. Last year I was watching CNN was hosting uh, uh, awards for people who had uh, been heroes because of their uh, tremendously important work in the world. And a particular actor had said on camera, wow, isn't it great that regular people are, are being praised? And I remember thinking to myself, you're a regular person. You're a regular person who's an actor. And the fact that this is the belief system that actors with jobs are set aside or special and that if you're not an actor, if you're not in the industry, then you are not one of the chosen ones. So it's very, very common to see that. I'd also want to talk about the structure of temples, how temples throughout the world are structured and how they're structured very similar to a theater. So in a temple, you will have the, the Holy of Holies, the most holy place, and that is where the priest gets to take the good book or the script and he gets to perform. And if you are wealthy and you can afford to do so, you sit closest to the Holy of Holies. And then the poorer you are, you're further away. And there's certainly that type of a structure in Hollywood with the theater. And in terms of the belief systems, that's kind of interesting. Um, when you try to work your way through the power structure of the cult, it's usually white males get to be on top of the power structure and females are, are usually lower down. And this is actually in keeping with the traditional uh, structure of a temple. Usually it was the males that were closest to the altar, closest to the sacred, uh, uh, the sacred text. And women were usually renegated. Either they were not permitted into a temple or holy space, or it was out in the bleachers somewhere. And we see the same structure uh, exist in Hollywood. Um, cults and fundamental religions usually get challenged at one point if there's a tipping point, if there are enough, enough people that have been abused or uh, have felt exiled or been threatened with exile and death, uh, have been told to remain silent. There's usually a point, a tipping point, and that is the beginning of the reformation of a church or a cult. When the secrets come out, Everybody starts to talk and either the church collapses, the cult collapses, or the church survives, but it is no longer what it was. 
And at that point, you have what's called a reformation or a restructuring of the church. Um, the other thing about a uh, cult is that they will often set themselves apart as different by how they dress or how they look. And this is also something that we see in Hollywood where we see uh, plastic surgery, Botox, fillers, and other types of surgery so that you can pretty much tell who's in the industry and who isn't. They've identified themselves by these markings. Their rank in the the uh, church, so to speak, by how much their face has been altered by these markings, just like you would see in a cult or a religion or even in a uh, primitive society where you have shamans, etc. So it's at this point in my lecture when <laughs> I have to have a conversation with those of you who are my friends and those of you who are my patients who absolutely love being actors and to tell you, please, please, please do not run to LAX and fly back to Poughkeepsie or Toronto or Jersey or wherever you came from. We want you in Los Angeles. Your work matters. You matter. Please don't run back home and flee and say, oh, my God, I've been in a cult. I've been in a cult. Help me get me out of here. I know some of you are thinking that. Um, if you are someone who feels called to be an actor, I think that's great. I think actors deserve respect. I think, you know, no matter what you choose to do in your life, uh, working hard, perfecting your craft, I think film is great. I love film. I've always loved film. I love film noir. I think it's all great. Uh, and I think it serves an, a positive function in the world, which is to lift us up, get us to have important conversations, to entertain us. I think actors do valuable work in the world. They should certainly be respected uh, if they are good, hardworking, decent actors, and they should be paid a working salary. Um, but everything else I don't think is healthy for actors. Um, everything that I've spoken to up to this point. So the reformation that's happening right now where the power structures in this cult-like situation we find ourselves in where the gods of the gods who built their own worlds you know these are the gods of the gods who built their own worlds and now their worlds are crashing down because they are learning that you don't get to do whatever you like you don't get to build your own rules without consequences so that is what we're facing and i think that we're fa what we're facing that shaking up we're facing is the reformation and with the Refor reformation comes necessary change and it becomes more egalitarian an example would be the reformation that became the anglican church which now has people of color in positions of uh, power women who can become priests openly gay people can become priests in the Anglican Church. So there was a reformation and from that rever reformation came something positive. And I think that what we're seeing today in Hollywood is a reformation. So the reformation would affect those groups that have been denigrated, abused, mistreated, subjugated. That is the fix. Don't go back to Poughkeepsie if you're an actor and you feel called to be an actor because you want to serve humanity, help with, you know, as an actor to uh, alleviate suffering in the world. I think that's beautiful and great and positive, but actors are people and that's okay. Uh, we don't need to make it more than that. Um, how do we fix it? By understanding that actors are people and recognizing the cult structure and not playing small when we're, say you meet an actor you admire, that's great. You can admire that person's work, but don't play small. That's not good for the actor and that's not good for you. I've been there where I've seen a little bit of a power issue with good Dr. Whimsy and I've, we've had to have a little conversation with a couple people. That's okay. It's okay to have that conversation. Uh, the other way that we uh, heal it is more women in positions of power in the structure, so, uh, more people of color in positions of power in the structure, supporting more independent film, absolutely important to create a more equal playing film uh, field, 
funding and supporting more independent film, holding people accountable uh, when they behave in inappropriate ways, keeping ourselves uh, grounded in reality, stop buying tabloid newspapers and promoting things that promote this idea of Hollywood uh, as a cult or actors as anything more than people who are actors. Okay, those are some of my suggestions. I could talk a ton about this. I already spent over 25 minutes on it, and I feel like I didn't do the conversation justice. But I want to thank you for uh, watching, and I'd like to hear some feedback because I am shooting this in L.A., and I know that my actors are watching, and uh, I do care. Uh, but And I, yeah, I hope I helped. I, I, I hope that I covered everything you asked me to cover. <laughs> Take care. Bye.